Very, very good. I've had, um, I've had a rather boring day because I've banned myself from being on my phone. <laughs> Has anyone else feeling a little bit overloaded, overly stimulated, sensory overload the last sort of like seven days, I would say? Well, I really am, and I am hanging by a thread. So I'm not allowing myself to do anything, but just only, like, all I can do is like speak to my son and my partner. So it's very boring, so I ended up resorting, I know, I ended up resorting to being a child and watching Harry Potter movies on the TV. <laughs> yes, I'm going to elaborate about that in a sec. Everyone say hello to Eric. Yeah, yeah, basically, I need to stare at a blank wall and listen like, to some white noise for a bit. That's how I feel. Um, so I figured if I go back and live in like fake stories and things like that, like Harry Potter and like wizards and shit like that, <laughs> then maybe I'll get my innocence back because I am exhausted. I am absolutely exhausted from how fast everything is moving. I can't cope. Um, and so tomorrow usually is my rest day, but I'll be bored because I can't like, lay, lay around like a slob and just be on my phone. So I've let my son have a sleepover with loads of his friends. I'm going to be exhausted. Can you imagine? Like four or five preteens. It's going to be hell on earth. So wish me luck. Anyway, I want to kind of get a vibe and a feel of who is here tonight. Do we have any special occasions here tonight? Do we have any birthdays? Happy, happy birthday, whether it's today or it was or it will be. Happy birthday. Do we have any anniversaries here tonight? <laughs> Sir, who are you? It's not your anniversary. Whose anniversary is it? Someone over there. Who are you pointing at? What anniversary is it for you? Hi, what number? Let's, 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 let's do it. No, I want to hear you. Show me with your hands. Three, eight. Wow. Woo. Thirteen. No, she said, no, it's not 13. She said three. Three, eight, 38 years. Wow. Bravo. Very nice. Do we have anyone else who has 30 years or above? Not that I can see. Is there anyone? What is your anniversary, sir? 33, we've got 33, 38. That's not who you were pointing at. Are you point who are you pointing at? What anniversary is it for you? 10. How do you guys know each other? Are you husband and wife? <laughs> well, hang on a minute, why aren't you sitting together? <laughs> Isn't that seat empty next to you? We had an argument. What happened? <laughs> How can we sort that out? Okay, in a couple of songs, if there's any more empty seats together, we'll make sure you sit together. It looks like they're arguing. I don't know what's going on. I can't hear you if you just talk to me. I need numbers. <laughs> anyway, I'll keep an eye out for two seats together. Anyway, do we have any... Oh, do you have any Valentine's gifts for here tonight? A few, okay, a few. Do we have any girls trips here tonight? Do we have any games trips here tonight? Do we have anyone that's come on their own this evening? That's a lot of you. I've only recently started asking that question because a few weeks ago I met a lady who was here on her own. And I was very impressed, especially because, you know, I mean, some of you might be living in Vegas, but to come all the way to Vegas. But then I was like, you know what? That sounds like the biggest form of self-love and self-care. <laughs> Going doing things on your own. So I've made a few, I've made a few like, not dates, but I've, I've organised to do a couple of things on my own. Obviously, it's not always on my own. There's like loads of security guards all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they ignore me and I ignore them sometimes. So I can, like, you know, I can tend to feel like I'm on my own. But I've made some plans in March to go and do things on, a few things on my own. So I appreciate you coming on your own. That's such a fucking vibe. Thank you so much. <laughs> do we have any mothers and their kids? Any mothers and daughters? Mothers and sons? Lovely. That's my favourite one. And of course, do we have anyone that has been dragged along against their will? It's okay, I will not be offended. I know there's a few of you, it's usually straight men, it's fine. It's fine. Well, again, I appreciate you making the effort to come. You will get laid, right? So you will come. Yes. My music might also get you in the mood. You never know. You might be coming on her tonight. <laughs> Anyway, well, whatever you're here for, and even if it's not a special occasion, I appreciate you coming so much and giving me your time. I'm very, very excited. I do love my Saturday night shows. They're normally a bit more like, a bit more like, I don't know, just a bit more rare, you know, leery and stuff like that. However, last night we're an excellent crowd, so you have some very, very big shoes to fill, so I'm expecting a lot. There's sing-alongs with 10 out of 10. Oh, oi, say oi. 
Well, I'm going to um, drag you headfirst through all of your emotional guilt, grief, and regrets that you've ever had in your whole life. But I'm going to make you laugh while I do it. I'm going to like get you to trust me by making you laugh, which means I can just hurt you even more. Like, <laughs> so are you are you willing and are you ready to go on that journey? Yesterday, at last night's show, oh sorry, I'm not really, I'm still chatting. When I'm nervous, I chat, I'm still chatting a lot of shit, don't worry, well, the nerves will wear off. But um, last night, um, I was probably the most exhausted I've ever been doing a show because I, my body like tricked me and betrayed me. I took a melatonin at 9pm on a Thursday night. I was like, let me get 12 hours before my show on Friday. And I was in 3.45, 3.45am I woke up and I didn't get back to sleep. I was an emotional wreck, so I also dragged myself back through all of my own emotional grief <laughs> and guilt and stuff like that last night. But I had 10 hours last night, so I'm feeling fresh and back. I'm going to do, do a couple more piano ballads for you um, in, in, in this little sort of stripped back setting. And of course the whole show is all piano ballads, as I'm sure you know. <laughs> But you know, like me sitting down being arty and stuff like that at the piano, we've got two more for you. And um, the show is very, very much a grower and not a shower. So it, it sort of looks very like simple and art deco, but it really, it, lots of things happen that you wouldn't expect. You know? <laughs> and also, even though I wear these speakers in my ear, I do love to hear you sing along. So um, please, if you know the words, I hope you do, um, sing at the top of your lungs and also, this, I know this is a very posh venue, and it's like red velvet seats and stuff like that. But um, this is not a seated show, so even though the show is full of piano balls, you are free to stand up whenever you want. And I know it might be annoying, especially if someone like six foot is like standing up in front of you and you just want to sit down. But don't you worry, because these massive green walls at the sides are actually screens. And they cost me a fucking fortune. <laughs> so please make sure you admire just how giant my big head will be on the So rather than getting grumpy and telling someone to sit down, just turn your head and look at my giant ass. Okay? This is turning tables. So I'm only doing 50 weekends. Um, so as of next week, we are really, really on the final countdown as it were. Um, so this show feels rather special and sacred. It feels very much like this isn't on the countdown and it's just like part of this incredible but strange Vegas universe that I've been in for quite some time. So even though I've only been performing here specifically for like, you know, like a year and a few months, my mind has been here for like three and a half years because obviously I'm sure you heard about it because people wrote about it like it was actually world news when it was not but i had a very very failed <laughs> first attempt at coming here um years ago and i made the decision to hold myself to the highest possible regard like i always do and not be good when i'm doing something that simply was not up to par you know it wasn't up to scratch and of course that's absolutely my fault as well and you know, everyone else is anonymous in this because I'm a solo artist and I'll take that, I'll take that responsi you know, responsibility fully. But I absolutely got over that horrible, horrible hump and hurdle once I opened here. Um, and it has honestly been um, the biggest joy of my career being here in Vegas. I know it might sound strange or you might think that I'm just like lying and just like trying to like make you feel good about being here. <laughs> But like, you know, my impression of Vegas before I came here was like, well, why would I do that? Like, I'm only like, well, I was 32, 32 when I started planning it. Um, and, you know, I'd, I'd never really been to Vegas before. Um, I'd obviously been to see Queen Celine Dion in this room. But I also, you know, I know that either she lived here and stuff like that and she had her kids, but the main reason I did it was because I find performing absolutely fucking terrifying. Like. I find it so nerve-wracking being on stage in front of people. It just doesn't feel very natural to, you know, be, me be here and you be there. Like, why can't I be out there and one of you be up here sort of thing? And also, you know, I have a child. He's 11 now and going on like 30. But, um, you know, he has his own life and I couldn't interrupt that life again because I held him back when I took him on my tour years ago. And I, you know, I wanted to pay him back by also doing something I love, but not disrupting him. Hence me flying straight home tonight to look after five fucking pre-teenagers, you know. <laughs> no rest for the wicked. And I just want you to know how truly life-changing these shows are. And like I said, you know, after tonight we're going to be on the countdown. So this kind of feels like a very special show to me. 
where my mind is and kind of only looking towards the end. So I appreciate you taking the time out of your life to come and spend time with me. I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful. And it's definitely made me less scared of performing live because you'll see throughout the show I get up into your face and I don't get frightened and nothing has happened that's made me feel frightened and it turns out it was all in my fucking head anyway all along. But um, yeah, I really, really have loved it and I'm going to miss it. Won't you miss it? Being a musician, even if you sing piano ballads, being a musician, you are like, you are a bit of a rock star, I'm sorry, because the kind of lifestyle you end up living, you're like, ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, all of us are addicted to something, you know, I, I do like a drink, I can't lie. <laughs> Definitely cut it back, and, you know, especially since I've become a mum and I've become a professional artist, but you know, easily, easily, easily could drink any one of you under the fucking table, <laughs> with ease, right? And maybe it's the grit in me, but um, the stability that this has given a bunch of basically rock stars that are working and you know, and, and including the crew and everybody like that is like second to none and um, it's given us peace of mind. So again, let me move on. I'm, I'm talking like it's the end of the show. Thank you guys and good night. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to do, I'm gonna do um, another piano ballad for you before I stand up and start doing some things. And, um, but it's the first song I wrote for my second album, but before I start it, I'm going to need the girls. So please give a massive round of applause to Lauren, Amanda and Katie. Cut out, girls! <laughs> oh, this looks something in the wrist. Do you know where that was? Oh, just have a little pop. Okay, get one more sip of my hot honey, one sec. Oh, I've got a burp. <laughs> oh, I've got acid reflux because... I've been trying to eat and train like an athlete. It's exhausting and it's boring. And I caved earlier and I had a cheeky, uh, <laughs> oh, I had a barbecue pork bun, you know, from dinner time. Oh, my acid reflux, that burp stank. Thank God I'm not facing my eyes. This is take it all. You actually have three up tempo songs. And I'm going to give all of them to you. That's number one. Taking a quick intermission so I can get my back and do my lottery seats. You can sit down for one minute, but when I say stand back up, I've got two more up tempos. That's your only chance to get some exercise tonight. Okay, so basically, inside of my tombola, thank you very much, Paul. Inside of my tombola is every single seat on the very, very top balcony, okay? Give me a while for a little bit. You can bring, I'm going to call out your specific seat number and you can bring one, to, one person down with you and you can be my guest Danny towards the front. The the show. Now if you're in a big group or a big party, you're going to have to figure that one out. On your own. <laughs> You've got block 407. <laughs> Row A, A for Adele. <laughs> seat 706. Oh my God, is it really you? Is it you in the white shirt? <laughs> <laughs> That you don't like. Oh, stand back up. Come on, we've got two up ten points. <laughs> and then we can just go back to being sad and miserable for the rest of the tour. Do you have any girlfriends or boyfriends that you just don't like? Excellent, excellent. Not current ones, Jesus Christ. Well, this is a song for all of our exes that we don't like. 
I revisited all those things that literally broke my heart, well, I'll just be a puddle every night. But that one, however, no, nope, I feel like I'm going to move you about my own life and I'll go all in head first. Right, now it's time for my favourite part of the show. So, a couple of disclaimers. I don't mean to be a Debbie Downer. This is a very, very powerful shotgun. You will oh, Shotgun? Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> I've said that twice now. I mean, it's been twice like a year and a half. First of all, I'm British, so why even say that word is crazy? My t-shirt gun is very fucking powerful. And so I'm not aiming at the floor, okay? I'm aiming at the balconies. And you will see why, because if it bogged you on your edge, you'd be very upset. So I'm aiming at the balconies, but I don't always land my shot. So, so don't, don't fall asleep downstairs, okay? Please don't lean over the balconies. I know that sounds obvious, but some people are fucking stupid. And if you're near a child, give it to the child. It's a signed t-shirt, handwritten note from me and 50 bucks for their bicep. Oh, what? Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 that's right. Stage, really sexy for the day. On my very last show, I decided I'm not going to wear a dress, I'm going to wear a sweatsuit, you know, or maybe it's my pajamas. You know. And I'm going to wear a Fitbit, so I'm going to see how many steps I actually get in. Right, are you ready up there in the top of the Oh, nice. Alright, Miss. Yeah, that was alright. Did you get it? Who got it? Let's have a look. Show off. Yay! Okay. Nazareth, and who are you here with tonight, Nazareth? My partner, Diana. Diana, and where have you guys come from? Nice, me too, I came from Los Angeles too. When did you guys get into town? Today. Nice, you got it today. What have you done so far? Gambled. Oh, gambled. <laughs> did you win anything? You lost it all. And I thought they do that on purpose in like casinos. They let you win just so they can take it all and more, isn't it? And when are you guys here until? Oh, lovely. What are you going to do after the show? Are you going to go to the club? Um, okay. Yeah, I'm going to go buy a lottery ticket. Oh, lovely. <laughs> nice. Do you come to Vegas often? No. Oh, lovely. No. Someone else said no. Um, but may I ask what you did the first time you came here? Oh, you did? It's your second time oh. seeing you. Where did you sit last time you were here? The last time, I actually purchased tickets for my partner because she graduated from her master's degree. Congratulations. Woo! So I did that for her right behind sound. And then this time was more of a Valentine's Day thing. And funny enough, we were like, oh, it's just so more casual this time. <laughs> Get right. Seat numbers. Oh, I love that. Well, I'm so thank you for coming back again. That's the highest possible compliment. That was so nice. And congratulations on your graduation. What a sweet party you are for getting the and Valentine's tickets. Absolutely amazing. Well, this song is for you guys. Absolutely. I hope you have a lovely, lovely. I know you're leaving in the morning, but I hope you have a lovely night. I hope you win the lottery. Okay, if you go back to gambling again, you know, if you get some Dutch courage in you, I hope you win and don't lose anything. Obviously, when I say I'm going to sing, dedicate this song to you, it's more the gesture than the sentiment. It's a very sad song. Let me get one more. Thank you so much, guys. I'm so glad. Hang on a minute. Did we sort out the dilemma with the, with the, with the anniversary husband? Did we sort it out? So is that seat next? What is the seat next to you, though? 
Oh, it's for the baby. Okay. Um, not their baby. It's not their baby. It's not their baby. Very cute. I've seen them. Do we have two? Mm, there's two seats over there. Are you saying two seats or it's an anniversary? Oh, no, I know, but I'm trying to get these two together because I spoke to them at the beginning. <laughs> oh, there we go. That lady in the fabulous sparkly blue top said that you will go over here. All right, there you go. Swap tickets, swap seats, guys, so they can be together. Go on. Absolutely lovely. Now, hang on a minute. You can't both come because there's only one seat. So one of you have to go over there, I think, madam. Guys, I've already spent minutes on this at the top of the show. Come on, you have to go over there because there's only one seat, my love. But that's, that's for the baby. <laughs> I'm confused. This very kind lady in the fabulous top is offering for you to sit with your husband and you're just staying there without your seat. That's the baby seat. Or are you just you guys making up? All right. Maybe just Interrupted my show twice now, guys, for nothing. But what if the baby wants to sit there? Security can sit there. This is dedicated to you, too, my darling. Amy Quinn. We do look very similar. Twin it. Normally, when I walk through the crowd, I have another microphone. Hello, hello, hello. I have another microphone and I often will stop and talk to a few people, hello handsome, who have caught my attention throughout the night. However, <laughs> however, I am fighting off germs like nobody's business. Everyone around me is sick and I'm sure a few of you are sick, knowingly and also unknowingly. And I simply can't take the risk because, yeah, if I'm tired, that's one thing, but if I'm sick, I'm not really supposed to sing. And, you know, like I said, I'm, I've only really got like 11 weekends left, really. So 10 or 11, I don't know, I can't work it out. I was trying to figure out the math earlier. It's like, if next week is weekend 40, then how come it's 22 shows left and not 20? You know, it wasn't my forte maths, so I don't, don't get over the grade, so. But whatever. Anyway, so normally I would talk to people that um, I love you, but not enough to get sick, sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much, Thank you very much. Um, But normally one of the things I would ask is what is one of their favourite memories from when they were younger? Hello. And, um, and I like to ask that question because it's quite a deep question to ask somebody, A, on the spot, in front of four and a half thousand people, um, but also like people's reaction, whether they're an introvert or an extrovert, will often determine the answer. Sometimes with someone that comes to the show a few times, they would have kind of been waiting their whole life to give me a deep core memory. <laughs> which shakes me a bit, um, but often it's on the spot and a few times people haven't been able to answer at all. Sometimes the kids are like, oh, this moment right now, which obviously makes me very emotional and often it's to do with grandparents, which I love because my grandparents were a huge part of my life. And I've also been trying every night, <coughs> every single show, not every weekend, to give a different memory of my own and um, it was really fun to start with, but I'm running out of memories. <laughs> um, so I'm sort of having to like, really, really jog my memory or completely relate it to something that's happening in real time. So I don't know, if, for those of you that know, that this weekend is All-Star Weekend. Basketball All-Star Weekend. Yes. Do we have Bye. basketball fans in the room? It's all star, and um, I don't know if any of you are aware, but I went a couple of years ago. I went, I, the only reason I went, I mean, I do love basketball, and obviously, basketball is a huge part of my life because basically that's what my partner does. He's an agent. Ah, this is getting really sad. We're getting some I only went to the all star because it was in Cleveland, and that's where my man is from. So, you know, it was like, you know, and also it was like you know, there was like a ceremony and the bronze stuff was a part of it. But anyway, so I wouldn't normally go to the all star. I do like to go to basketball games, I'm not dissing basketball, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> but when I went, it wasn't actually that long after my failure to launch the original um, Baker shows. Um, and do you remember that viral meme of me looking like I don't give a flying fuck? <laughs> <laughs> looking everywhere in the camera. I'd like to give some contact, context to that meme. So I know it sounds crazy, but I really don't like being famous, right? So obviously I know sitting courtside at a basketball game, you're asking for it, whatever, but 
Rich was like working in the room and you know he was like talking to players and talking to people and I was fine, I didn't mind, I was just there on my own looking for Michael Jordan to be honest with you. So. <laughs> but um, the people with the camera came and asked me twice. They were like, do, do you mind if we film you? Can we put you on the screen? I said, please don't. Please don't, I'll just cancel Vegas. I really don't want to, you know, I really don't want to. They, they came back and they filmed me. So I had, and the reason my lips look like I had filler, because I don't, I've got naturally big lips, right? I don't need filler. The reason I looked like a different person was because I was sulking, because I was like, these motherfuckers have, have come back and are filming me against my, against my will. So I was like, and I didn't, I didn't realize they were airing it on TV. I thought it was just in the room, you know, but anyway, I just wanted to get some context is that I was ignoring and looking everywhere but in the camera because I was very annoyed because I asked not to be filmed but I guess I was asking it by going. Anyway, that's my memory for tonight. Because tonight <laughs> <I'm really laughs> and on that note, <clears throat> also my face is just very memeable, I can't help it. <laughs> Resting bitch face and then also super excited. <laughs> on that note, this is when we were young. The social breakdown, thank you so much. Show. One day, whenever I feel able and ready and willing to make another album, I promise to come to wherever you are. Absolutely promise. I've got two more songs for you. Happy belated Valentine's Day, but if I know it's going to fall down at the end. I've got two more songs for you. One more up tempo, can you believe that? And I have one mid tempo for you at the end. Alright, should we get our last sets in for the night? This is Rolling in the Deep. Thank you so much, I appreciate it.